Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Full Potential Show. I'm James Rick, and this is your number one non-boring source for personal development. Today on the line, we have Jill Fisher. She's an international speaker, hypnotherapist, mindset coach. Today, we're going to talk about how to remove your blocks so you can rock. The website for Jill is jillfisherinternational.com, and today's show is about helping you if you want to bring more money, health, and love into your life and you have some kind of invisible threshold that prevents you from achieving desired results. We're going to get to the core of it today. Jill, thank you so much for being on today's Full Potential Show. Thank you. This is fun already. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just going to get better and better as we go along. I'm planting those seeds hypnotherapy-wise. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so first of all, what is, what is hypnotherapy? Oh, okay. Uh, hypnotherapy. Yeah, actually, that's a great question because it's often misunderstood. Really, hypnotherapy is just, uh, it's like a meditative state. It's like meditation with a purpose. That would that'd be how I sum it up the quickest. But it's, it's a state like when you're just falling asleep, just waking up. If you're daydreaming out the window, you're in a hypnotic state. Okay, and so there's, it, I mean, so it's it's basically like you're in a trance of some kind. Yeah, um, it doesn't have to be deep. <laughs> um, it can just simply be, you know, even when you drive from A to B and you don't remember it, you've been kind of in a light hypnotic state. So it doesn't have to be this really deep trance that maybe you see on stage where they they have people dance like a chicken. It doesn't have to be really really deep like that. Or deep trance just, like just people walking down the street and nobody's home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So now you put them in this state, right? I mean, you, you, anybody who's ever seen a, a hypnotherapist, this is very different from stage hypnotherapy. And, and explain why. What is different about the way you get them into state versus uh, somebody who's like a stage hypnotherapist? Um, really, the way I get people into a, a state of hypnosis is by telling them a story. It's almost like reading a story to a child at night, and I. But I will script it. I'll make it specific to whatever their topic is, whatever they want to create more of or let go of. Then I'll create a story around that that supports what they want to make. So it's it's really specific to the person and their goals. Now, why and, does that work? Why does a story put you in a trance-like state? There's certain techniques. Um, there's certain ways that you can uh, choose specific words that uh, allow a person to relax. Um, there's, you know, in a, the beginning of when I work with somebody, the beginning is a conversation like coaching. And it's so that they get to know me and I get to know them. And in that conversation, I will uh, recognize, you know, if they like to think a lot, I'll use thinking words and knowing words. If they like to feel a lot, I'll use feeling words. So, so I look for how they like to speak, how they like to think, and then I'll choose words that are congruent with that. Uh, well, that sounds like a lot of work. You just go in there and you kind of dissect their brain a little bit. Uh, mad scientist. <laughs> mad scientist. Okay, so now you've got a patient in there and they've come for an answer. Let's say they want to stop smoking or, you know, what, you know they want to fall in love. Or what, what are the list of things you commonly see? Uh, actually, stop smoking is a very common one. It's a, it's a real common connection with hypnotherapy and, and a problem. Okay, so, so they want to stop smoking. I mean, there's people that, uh, you know, want to have greater wealth in their life. I mean, there's all kinds of blocks. Yeah. that are going on and it's on a subconscious level right I mean it's the wiring on a subconscious yeah. level that really yeah. needs to get cleared yeah exactly so whatever it is but you know a lot of them link smoking to it but we essentially we all have subconscious blocks to some degree right sure sure we're okay, human so so you have this subconscious block that's preventing you from doing X you're not you know X could be whatever it is you want to create in your life have more of more abundance or whatever but you have this block that's going on First of all, why do you think, or in your experience, why is that block there in the first place? It's preventing you from doing something you want to do. Why is it there in the first place? Uh, usually it, it comes from a story we tell ourselves as a kid. And it could be, I've had one client, um, she tripled her income after figuring this out. And she was there about her, her money. And she had a story about going to a birthday party and the bowl of chips was empty. And so... 
she was about five years old. And in that moment, she told herself as a little girl, she told herself, I don't deserve chips. I'm not good enough for chips to be saved for me. And that translates into adulthood mm. so that she has this invisible glass ceiling of income because of that deserving or lack of deserving. So, so, so we these, all these make stories, income. these stories create these uh, beliefs and they usually started when we were kids and we didn't realize the power and the weight that they have over us in our adult lives today. Right, right. Usually around five years old, we make up a story like this. It's really strong around 10 years old and again at 14. And we all do it. It's, it's part of the human design and they're not real, but they sit in us and they, we think they are real and we don't even really think about them, not consciously, they're there. Because we and live them, they become so dominant. That's right, yeah. Okay, so yeah. so we, we start creating these stories as we're trying to make sense of our world, as we're trying to create rules for reality, we start setting up these stories that then begin to dominate our actions and prevent us from doing things that down the road we decide we wanna do, but we can't because there's this subconscious wiring in there. So this sets the stage for you, my dear, and you, <laughs> you step in, you put them in a trance, and, and, and then where do you go from there? How does one start to clear out some of the old wiring? So the, the trance or the, the storytelling part is really to relax them. And then I have a question answer process. So I, I, I want you in a really, really light state so that you can still speak to me. And, and I'll, I'll ask you questions to lead you back to a previous memory that's connected to what's happening in your life now. And so in going into the previous memory, the point of origin, uh, to look at the negative emotions is not so much about the story. It's more or, or like of what actually happened. It's, it's what happened in your mind at that time, what happened in your emotions at that time. And so in being able to connect the point of origin or the, the cause, then, then I, I take you through a process and it's just, it's a conversation back and forth. And I just, I ask you a question, you answer. It's almost like a Visio flow chart. It's very analytical. It's surprisingly analytical, but I'll ask you something. And depending on your answer is where I go. And the point is, is to dissolve any negative emotion that happened way back when, or it could have happened two years ago. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be a long The, the emotion can remain charged no matter what the timeline is. The emotion right. can be just as real as if it was yesterday, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So to diffuse the emotion to a neutral place, and then because your subconscious doesn't know the difference between reality and a fairy tale, so then we make up a really juicy, fun story that might make you kind of giggle. And so we've replaced what was really negative and charged negative with a charge of positive. Mm -hmm. So what used to hold you down is now actually holding you up. Okay. And is this a process that somebody can go through with themselves or do they need to work with a, a, a hypnotherapist for this? Or You can you can do this. I do teach my, my patients how to do this self-hypnosis and how to do this on their own and how to do it um, you know culturally we're taught to stuff our emotions which pushes this down and usually presents in a physical way it can it can pre present it can manifest as, in a, uh, some kind of illness or exactly okay. yeah yeah so I teach them a process using color to dissolve negative emotion instantly you can do it as quick as as the feeling of stuffing an emotion, you can use this color to actually dissolve that and heal your cells. How, how is this question and answer process that you go through different from psychotherapy, for example? Um, you know, where you sit on the couch and they ask a bunch of questions. How is this different? It's very different, actually. The stats are, are uh, extremely different on psychotherapy. Uh, six sessions of hypnotherapy is equivalent to something like 300 hours of psychotherapy. Uh, it's, it's extremely different. So to get into the subconscious, your blind area, in a conversation with psychotherapy, you may not be able to remember these things. And so in, in the hypnotherapy, you're able to access what you've forgotten about but is still there. And then the process it's not about talking and talking and talking about it. In fact, what actually happened is not really that important. And it, it could be traumatic, it could be striking out at bat. Um, 
It's more the story that's created in her mind about it. If and then the emotion charge. And, oh, absolutely the emotion charge. So, okay, so what I'm getting is it's really the level of depth that you work at. You can either work at the top of the structure and it's going to take a long time before it actually sinks in or you can go right to the base where the emotion and the story is and you can resolve it in just a few quick sessions. Yeah, and if you if you've got the first time it happened or the most significant time that it happened, it's like a domino effect that say something happened, say I say I struck out at bat at 5 years old and I told myself I'm no good. Nobody's going to like me because I can't perform. So five. So then, it's like a domino effect of the rest of my life. I will prove that right. And there might, there may be other traumatic experiences where you just validate that feeling, and the emotion exactly. comes back, and it's a chain all yeah, the way so through. Yeah. So being able to go back today. to that. So being able to go back to that that five year old story, and pick up that domino. It's almost like they're they're connected with strings. All the rest is resolved. All the emotion charge on the rest of it are picked up, and and you're supported from getting that first moment. Yeah. Now, I'm a big fan of this because, uh, you know, I've used it in my own life and I've seen the impact of getting to that first experience, getting to the core emotions. There's usually a big release afterwards, right? I mean, crying or, or you know, whatever that release might look like. But right. because it's so stored and it can actually, you know, embed itself even in our physiology and our nervous system, there usually has to be some kind of release after you've hit that core story and you've hit that core emotion and the domino starts to do its thing, right? It yep. starts to resolve. Yeah, you, yeah. there is a, a, a release of emotion. If there's not a release of emotion and culturally we're conditioned not to feel or not to show emotion. So it is, you know, to have a, a safe place where it's appropriate to, to let go of emotion. It might be tears. It might be anger. It, it might be confusion. And that's part of my qu question answer process is there's a time in there that's, uh, that's it's appropriate and, and it's designed to allow them to release emotion. The emotion is like the gatekeeper. If, uh, if emotion is not released, it doesn't happen. It, the, yeah, you could talk about it all you want on a logical level, but there does need to be some kind of emotional release. If there's an emotional charge, there's going to be some kind of emotional release because that's all emotion wants, right? To flow, to release. It doesn't want to be stored up for years and years and years, which is what happens when you have these negative impressions that you don't ever resolve. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard the concept perturbation? Perturbation. That's what this is. Perturbation. So it's like coal becoming a diamond under pressure, mm. right? And perturbation is that process and the, the barrier, what keeps the coal from becoming a diamond is emotion. If emotion can't be released under the pressure, so, so the analogy is that humans under pressure become more complex and the gatekeeper is emotion. So that's exactly what you're talking about. The emotion the is emotion holding us out. back from becoming diamonds. Yeah, that that repressed emotion. OK, well, I know we, we've got yeah. some tips here for folks that are that are watching, listening right now. I mean, first off, I think the biggest takeaway here is that we all have some kind of story that is untrue, that is dominating our belief system. And we all have some deeper emotion that w whether it was a simple event in our mind, like that we now look back and go, oh, that was such a childish thing. But it's the emotion that we need to grapple with. The emotion yeah. is what charged up the event. And now as an adult, we might look at it as silly, but still somewhere in your nervous system, somewhere in the subconscious, it could still be impacting you today based on what beliefs you formed out of that event. So just know that it, it could be in there somewhere and that it is our job now as an adult and with the light of awareness to go in there, find those weeds and pull them out. And this yeah. is one way to pull them out very effectively versus, uh, you know, psychotherapy and years and years of trying to figure it out logically. But like the difference of, of conscious, your conscious mind is like your pinky for the rest of your body. The rest of your body is your subconscious, your unconscious, mm. your non-conscious. And so that's actually your power center. Mm. And, and we've all heard, you know, we use 10% of our brain. And so they're talking about the 10% being our conscious brain. And now with neuroscience, they're putting it at 2 to 4%. Is this the conscious, the critical thinking? The rest is in our subconscious. 
So to access it, so it, it explains why everyone knows how to lose weight. You know that consciously, mm -hmm. but subconsciously is how you display it, whether you lose it or not. All right. Well, let's talk about how we can take control of our subconscious more so, because yeah, the conscious is definitely the uh, the passenger in the in the chariot, so to speak. The subconscious kind of driving the thing. Right. So, how do we take control of our wild horses? How do we harness the power of our subconscious to create results that we consciously choose in our life, but that subconsciously, unless we have that support, we're not going to get there. Well. I mean, hypnotherapy, of course. <laughs> I, I, um, I was, I'm surprised you would say that. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually, it's the, the, the fastest chariot I have found to access, like to, to get in there and find what it is. Um, outside of hypnotherapy, you can do things on your own, like free flow journaling. And especially when you're just falling asleep and just waking up, if you, you know, I have a, a journal right beside my pillow and whatever thoughts come up to just write them down and that also helps quiet your mind because then your subconscious gets, oh, it's written down. I don't have to keep thinking about it. So that mind chatter can slow down because your, your mind knows that it's written down. So also free flow is just as it sounds, just sit down with a blank sheet of paper or in front of a blank screen and just start writing. Yeah, whatever's there. Okay. Um, no editing, no critical anything, just whatever's there to let it out. And it, it's, if you think of if you're going on a hike through a forest and you go around the corner and you see, oh, there's a bear or, oh, there's a deer or, oh, there's a rock. It's like that. It's just whatever's there is there. It's not right or wrong. It's just there. Mm -hmm. And, and so um, to be able to let it out and see what's actually there you can use journaling i would recommend uh, a pen a ballpoint blue okay. ink pen okay so so free flow journaling have you got some other ideas on how to tap into the subconscious just kind of chill chill <laughs> um another way is we all have uh you know the little voice in the back of our mind going and that comes from a part of our brain called the amygdala and or it's called a monkey brain or a lizard brain and it goes 24 7 and we all have it and 76 percent of that is going to be negative negative. and so to recognize that we all have it and it's just part of our it's part of our genetic makeup for from caveman days actually to to run from saber-toothed tiger and survive it's there and it's it wants to keep you alive it's totally run on on survival mm -hmm. and so in, in recognizing that that's, that's going to be there all the time, the way that uh, you can um, control or counter it is the front part of your brain here. The, the prefrontal cortex is the part of your brain where it's stimulated with, um, with learning, with uh, anything creative, things like yoga, um, meditation, going for walks in nature, playing with pets. That part of your brain, actually humans, the, the front part of our brain is 42% of our brain, which is the largest of all the animals, and that's why we're the top of the heap. So, um, and this is what counters that negative self-talk. And so the more you can stimulate that part of your brain, that's, that's where um, brain scans were done. That's why I said blue ink when you journal. Mm -hmm. the, the activity in the front part of your brain is most stimulated with the color blue. Oh, okay. All right, so we're, I'm gonna go through these real quick and then we'll talk about uh, this free gift that is gonna help them. It's the, uh, it, in a way, it's, it's like guided hypnotherapy, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, top recommendations by Jill Fisher for harnessing your subconscious mind, which is 95% of the powerhouse of <laughs> who, who you are. Hypnotherapy, free flow journaling, pen, blue ink, uh, and then also recognize voice in the back of mind. This amygdala is running all the time and it's got your survival in mind and it's mostly going to be negative. So get ready. And uh, it's there to keep you alive. So it's actually got a positive intention, but you can learn to condition and take control of the process through learning, being creative, yoga, meditation, walks in nature, and playing with your pets, which is easy to do because I'm a dog person. Uh, all right, so we're going to talk about uh, maximizing this first tool that she's a big fan of, and that is hypnotherapy. And uh, we've got a free gift for you folks that are watching today. And that free gift is about money mindset, right? Really reconditioning the money mindset in your mind. 
Um, where do they get a copy of this? And can you briefly talk about what this, uh, how this gift works or, or what's in it, what they can expect? Sure, it's, it's an audio download at MP3 and you can just click on the, the website page is uh, off, my web, off my website. It's www.jillfisherinternational and so that's J-I-L-L-F-I-S-C-H-E-R and then the word international.com slash wired for wealth slash money mindset dot mp3 all right we're gonna put that on the uh description here <laughs> at com. yeah so it's it's uh jillfisherinternational.com slash wired for wealth slash money mindset dot mp3 we'll put that link uh on the description and uh jill I understand you do a lot of speaking, hypnotherapy, and, and, and coaching for folks. So anybody who's watching and listening right now, if you want to remove some blocks and really rock with Jill, I definitely recommend reaching out to her. And uh, Jill, any final thoughts before we wrap up today's show? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Once those blocks are removed, you can completely rock your life. You rock. Completely. It's you that rock. easy. If you want to rock, remove the block. You got it. <laughs> All right, Jill. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being on today's show and helping to remove some of our blocks as we Excellent. progress towards living a full potential life. Great. Thank you. All right. Take care. <laughs> well, that concludes this week's episode of The Full Potential Show, your number one non-boring source for personal development. I'm James Rick, and if you want to get more positive programming for your brain absolutely free on a weekly basis, just visit fullpotential.com. If you like The Full Potential Show, you're going to love The Full Potential Club. What would you like most as a Full Potential Club member? Be two to three times more productive? Do what you're passionate about? Have more energy? Reduce your work hours? Travel the world? Enjoy an amazing lifestyle on a frugal budget? What if you could do them all? James Rick has been there and done it in ways that few people have. For anyone serious about taking their life or business to the next level, you know you've got to do more than just watch. You've got to do. Join James Rick and other like-minded people for an incredible $10 a month at fullpotential.com slash club. Be educated. Be empowered. Be the best version of you. Fullpotential.com slash club. Try it free for 30 days.